A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and from the fragments of five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, Today the church has given us the gospel according to St. John chapter 6 verse 1 to 15 as a subject of our meditation and reflection. In this chapter, we read about the Eucharistic discourse of Jesus. As an introduction to the Eucharistic discourse, St. John gives a miracle worked by Jesus, the multiplication of bread and feeding of the 5,000. This is the only miracle that we find in all the four Gospels. But unlike the Synoptic Gospels, St. John links this particular miracle to the Eucharistic discourse. He links it to his teaching about Holy Eucharist. The link that he has used to connect the feeding of the 5,000 to the Eucharist is a statement about the Passover feast. The Passover feast of the Jews was at hand and Jesus was sitting uh, along with his disciples across the sea of Genesareth. Then a large multitude followed him and Jesus felt compassion towards them. And that is why he worked this miracle. I don't want to dive deep into the theological implications of this miracle. I would like to concentrate more on some practical relevances and messages and meaning of this particular miracle. As St. John has described it. A large multitude followed Jesus. And because of his compassion towards them. He wanted to feed them. Jesus is compassionate God, is a compassionate God, He is a caring God, He is the one who provides everything for His faithful. Now, Jesus asked a poking question to Philip. Even if he decided what to do in order to feed these people, he asked Philip, From where shall we get? enough food to feed these people 
as i told you this was a poking question jesus uses this kind of techniques many a times for example when he met the samaritan woman he asked her would you please give me some water it was to bring out what was deep inside her mind her hatred and bitterness towards the jews immediately she responded you are a jew and i am a samaritan and why are you asking me water there is no dealing between the jews and the samaritans so she expressed her feeling of bitterness in order to be healed when jesus met the man who was paralyzed for 38 years and lying by the side of the pool of bethsaida jesus asked do you want to be healed immediately the disappointment of that man was expressed i want to be healed but there is nobody to take me down to the water when the angel comes and, and stirs the water so his disappointment was expressed when the two disciples who were going back to emmaus were discussing among themselves jesus walked along with them and asked them what are you discussing about then immediately the response came all their feelings of disappointment and failure came out we are speaking about jesus of nazareth so jesus asked this kind of poking question you know to bring out what is deep inside the mind of the uh, of the audience so when jesus asked to philip what shall we give to these people then what was inside the mind of philip came out lord even bread worth of 2000 denarii will not be enough to feed these people what is hidden behind this particular response he saw anxiety about two things we don't have enough money with us second even if we may have money the markets may not have that much quantity of food to feed this much people because in those days they did not have supermarkets or wholesale shops providing such a great quantity of food and what is behind this anxiety behind this anxiety we can find a feeling and sense of deficiency we don't have enough every human being has got this kind of feeling of deficiency now andrew the brother of peter comes and he brings uh, he gives a solution there is a boy here who has got five loaves of bread and two fish but immediately he adds but what is it for this kind of, this kind of a big multitude so he also expressed his feeling of insufficiency or deficiency now what was the response of jesus to this particular problem his reaction was completely different he asked the disciples instead of complaining about what you do not have instead of brooding over your deficiency you bring what you have then the disciples obeyed jesus they brought the two fish and five loaves of bread to jesus and what he did he gave thanks to the lord and praised god for the little bit then he broke it and gave to the hands of the disciples the disciples started distributing the bread and fish among the people then the miracle took place in the hands of the disciples 5000 men and a large number of women and and children were well fed all of them were fully satisfied and 12 wicker baskets full of leftover pieces were collected by the disciples why 12 12 is the number of perfection 12 disciples 12 tribes of israel and every multiplication of number 12 is considered to be a number of perfection 144 elders so that miracle was a perfect miracle jesus multiplied perfectly now another message that we have to deduce from this particular miracle and description of saint john is this god provides and multiplies and increases not only to solve the problem of a particular moment but also even for the future 
when Jesus multiplied the bread, he was able to feed the 5,000. But the 12 baskets full of leftover pieces were kept for the future, for the use of the people in the future. So he gave surplus. Now, let us try to take a few practical implications and messages for the modern man. The modern man is always trying to get self-reliance and self-sufficiency. The governments, the society and individuals, everyone, everybody wants to be self-sufficient in their life. Nobody wants to experience deficiency or insufficiency. If there is any insufficiency, it really gives worry to the people and they try to solve it. They use human means to solve it, but very often they fail. They don't tend to God. They don't invite Jesus to interfere in their own deficiencies. Now, when we turn back to Old Testament, we find similar miracles worked by God in order to take care of the needs of the people, not only for that particular moment and even for the future. For example, in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 8 to 16, we read about Elijah the prophet going to the house of the widow of Seraphath. It was a time of very severe drought and widespread famine. There was no food in the market, no food grain was grown in the, in the fields. Elijah asked her, would you please give me a piece of bread? This woman came back and told her, told him, your servant does not have anything at home except little bit of oil in my jar and bit of duff in my pot. I am going to cook food with that and we are going to die because there is nothing more left at home. Then Elijah told her, okay, you do one thing. First, you cook a piece of bread for, bake a piece of bread for me. Then you bake for yourself and for your son. But if you do that, what is going to happen? The dove in your pot and the oil in your jar will never get over until the famine ends. And that miracle took place. God multiplied not only for that particular moment, even for the future, till the famine ended. That woman did not have scarcity of food. In the uh, second book, uh, book of Kings, chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, we read a similar, read about a similar miracle worked by Elisha. A widow who was the wife of one of the disciples of Elisha came to the prophet and entreated him, My Lord, please help me. Your servant, my husband, left me with a, a heavy uh, debt. Now the money lenders are coming and harassing me and threatening me to take my children as captives. You are the only one who can help me. Then Elisha asked her, Woman, what do you have at home? Immediately the response came, just like that of the uh, woman at Seraphat. Your servant does not have anything at home except little bit of oil. Then Elisha told her, instead of complaining about what you do not have, you take that little bit of oil you have and pour it into all the vessels at home and collect as many vessels as possible from your neighborhood. And the woman went home and did the same as commanded by the prophet. When she filled the first jar, she took the second one and third one and fourth one and all the jars and all the vessels were full. Then Elisha asked her, you go and sell it and you can pay back the debt. Not only that, you will have some leftovers which you can use for your daily sustenance in the future. So God multiplied not only for that particular moment, but also for the future. In the same chapter, verses 40 to 44, we read about another miracle worked by Elisha. One of his disciples brought 
20 pieces of barley bread and few ears of grain. And Elisha asked his servant to distribute it among the people who were almost 100 in number. Then the servant expressed his uh, uh, anxiety. Oh my Lord, how can I distribute this 20 pieces of bread and few ears of grain among these 100 people? Then Elisha said, God says like this, they will eat and some left over. So he distributed this bread and the grains among the hundred and all of them were fully satisfied. See this is how God works. Instead of complaining about the deficiency we experience in our daily life, instead of brooding over our own uh, deficiencies and insufficiencies, what we do not have, let us be thankful to God for what we have. Let us be thankful to God for God has already given us. This is true not only about the material things. For example, there are so many husbands and wives who are complaining about the lack of love of their spouse. The husband complains that now my wife does not love me. The wife complains that my husband does not love me. They never appreciate what they receive from the spouse, from the other one. They are always complaining about what they do not get. But I would say, and Jesus also recommends, stop complaining and appreciate what you have and be grateful to God and to your spouse for what he or she has already given you or continue to give you. Then God will multiply. This is also about talents. We should not be like that man who received one talent, who did not appreciate the one he received and compared with himself with the others who received more. He hid it in the soil and he lost even the one he got it. Let us be like that man who got two talents. He never compared himself with the man who got five. He never complained about the deficiency. He faithfully made use of what he got and he was able to multiply two more and he was well appreciated by the master. So in the same way, if we have any talent, don't complain about what we do not have. Appreciate what we have and make use of it for the glory of God Then he will multiply and increase it. The same way, some spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts are given for us, uh, so given to us for the sake of the building up of the church. Instead of complaining about the, the uh, deficiency of spiritual gifts, let us be grateful to God for the little bit we have and make use of it. Then God will multiply it and we will be able to cooperate with the church in building up of the church. So I would say that instead of complaining about what we do not have, let us be grateful to God for what we have and give it to God what we have. And a short message more, when we give ourselves to the hands of God, the little bit we have, he will multiply it not only for us, even for the future generation. When God transformed the water of Mara into sweet water, it was not only for the people of Israel of that moment, but it became a source of drinking water for the future generation. When he uh, allowed a spring to flow from the rock at Massa and Meriba. That spring became a source of water for the future generations. The same way, when God interferes in our life and when we give what we have to the hands of God, He multiplies not only for uh, our present needs, but even for the future and for the future generation. And don't waste anything. That is a third message that Jesus wants to give us. Food is a precious gift of God. What is a precious material God has given in this nature? And our spiritual gifts are precious. And let us not waste what God has given us. Let us be faithful in making use of what we have, what God has granted us. Then thus, let us become a blessing for the future generation also. May God bless you and may God grant you all your heart disease. Thank you very much. May God bless.